हेलो गाइस आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक इन डिटेल अबाउट द फाइबर कपलर्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट द कनेक्टर द स्प्लाइसेस एंड आफ्टर दैट वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ जॉइंट्स एज वेल सो इफ यू हैव स्टिल नॉट वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियोज इट इज हाईली रिकमेंडेड दैट यू गो बैक वॉच दैम फर्स्ट एंड देन कम टू दिस वीडियो Today we are going to talk in detail about the couplers and their different types and some parameters also we will be discussing about the couplers we will be discussing some applications as well so first of all what is a coupler so coupler is going to couple the energy or distribute the light energy from the main fiber to the secondary fibers or some branch fibers i can say so if i have a main fiber let's suppose this is my main fiber if i transmit the light from this fiber it is going to couple the light from this fiber as well so this operation is called the coupling okay i hope now you understood the basic terminology of coupling right so light is coupled to the nearby fiber as well so this process is really important to all of us because sometimes we want to distribute the light right so we want to distribute the signal to the multiple fibers if i want to send the signal to a single receiver then i can do it with the help of single optical fiber but if i have two receivers from which i have to simultaneously send the signal so what i will be doing i will be taking the coupling action right i will be sending the signal to two fibers using the coupling right so i hope you understood why we require coupling so now we will be having the different type of couplers if i am sending the signal from the main fiber or the primary fiber to one only secondary fiber then it is a single port coupling right after that we will be having the multi port coupling as well in the multi port coupling we are distributing the light from the one primary fiber to the multiple branches right we are going to talk about it we are ca calling it as star coupling and we will be talking in detail about it now coming to the applications what are the applications of the coupling it is used in the data buses right it is used in the lan the local area network after that it is used in the computer network and then it is used for the telecommunication access network right telecom access network also use the coupling process so now we can have the passive devices or we can have the active devices the passive devices will be having two mechanism right through the core we can do the coupling or through the fiber surface we are going to do the coupling right so first one when we are using the coupling through the core is called the core interaction coupling and if i am using the coupling through the surface so it is called the surface interaction coupling so now how we are doing the coupling through the core so here one fiber is connected to the another fiber in such a way both of the cores are connected so both of the cores are connected then it is called the butt joining right or butt jointing or image optics right simple we have the joints in the joints the power is coupled from one fiber to another fiber this is called the core interaction after that we have the surface interaction in the surface interaction the power of from the fiber surface is transmitted normal to it so this is the fiber surface and if i want to couple the power to a normal fiber so this can be happening through the surface interaction right so power from this fiber is going to this normal fiber so this is how we will be having two type of passive mechanisms right after that we have the active wave guide coupler as well so it is using the integrated optical fabrication so we are going to talk in detail about what are the fabrications that we need to use for the coupling right we will be using the fabrication process with the heating also we are doing the fabrication we are fusing the fibers for making it used as a couplers so that is the active coupling right so in the active coupling we we can have the three and four port couplers right after that we can have star couplers and the wavelength division multiplexing couplers so we are going to talk about the wdm devices later on when we will be talking about the wdm only and now here we will be talking in detail about the three to four port couplers and the star couplers 
so let's understand all of the types of the couplers so the optical fiber couplers are of different types we can have the splitters if i want to transmit the signal from this direction into two direction as i said if i can be having two receivers so this would be my receiver one and this would be my receiver two so here i can use the splitter splitter is going to split the same signal into the two fibers so power will become half now combiner is going to combine the two signal from the two receivers let's suppose i want to transmit the or for from the two transmitter let's suppose from two transmitters i want to send the signal to a particular receiver so i will be using the combiner now coupler from the coupler i will be having a primary fiber so let's suppose one one dash is my primary fiber and two two dash is my secondary fiber so now here we have taken a coupling length over which the fibers are parallel and here the coupling will happen and when the power was traveling in the or optical signal was traveling in the primary fiber only here at this position the coupling will take place and now from here in the secondary fiber also i will be having some coupling right so this is called the coupler then we have the star coupler we ha we can have the multi port coupler so as i told you we can have the multiple branches as well so here in the star coupler we have the multiple inputs and multiple outputs but the primary input is only one so here one one dash is a primary input in which the signal was sent and now the signal is coupled to all other secondary branches when i had this parallel branch right so from this surface the power is getting coupled to all of the other branches as well then we have wavelength multiplexer in the wavelength multiplexer what happens we are sending two signals of different wavelength over the same channel right if i want to send some signals over the same channel i can have the wavelength division multiplexing right so what i can do i can take the signal from one lambda and i can take the signal from another lambda so this is not wdm so this is a simple multiplexer over which i am taking the two signals in two wavelengths and i am sending them as a multiplex signal because two signals which are having two wavelengths are not going to mix so i can send them as a single signal over the single channel so now here we can have demultiplexer as well which is going to demultiplex two different wavelength signals so this is how we can have the two different wavelength signal going to the two different receivers and we use the same channel for their propagation so now if i talk in detail about the coupler now if i classify the couplers we can have diffusion coupler these are the mechanism by which the coupling is happening first the coupling can happen with the diffusion coupling then the area splitting coupler and the beam splitting coupler we are going to talk in detail about all three of them now first is the diffusion coupling in the diffusion coupling we have two types evanescent wave coupler and twisted pair coupler in the evanescent wave coupler which is the simplest type of coupler in the evanescent wave coupler we have a primary fiber you can see this is my input fiber which is represented as primary fiber let's denote it with 1 1 dash and we have a secondary fiber 2 2 dash right so how we have taken the primary fiber primary fiber was as it is so it was a straight fiber which was placed in a straight manner now light is going from this primary fiber right so light energy is propagating through this primary fiber now what will happen we are taking the secondary fiber and we are making some portion of the secondary fiber parallel to the primary fiber so that the light will be now coupling through this secondary fiber as well now some reflection can also happen so here the reflection can also happen the length over which i have taken the two fibers parallel is called the coupling region and where they are not parallel these are called the tapered region you can see this is a coupling region from this to this it is having the length l and then we have the tapered region at the both hands of the coupling region right so evanescent wave coupler is the simplest type of coupler here we have used the coupling from the input fiber to the secondary fiber we had the power which was going only in the input fiber and the power is now going and coupling to the secondary fiber as well so fibers are parallel for certain length length which is called the coupling region and the parallel length is called the coupling length right which is denoted by l 
नाउ कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ डिफ्यूजन कपलर सो नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ डिफ्यूजन कपलर इज द ट्विस्टेड पेयर कपलर इन द ट्विस्टेड पेयर कपलर एज द नेम सजेस्ट वी हैव द टू वायर्स विच आर ट्विस्टेड सो हेयर टू फाइबर्स विल बी ट्विस्टेड सो लेट सपोज दिस इज माई प्राइमरी फाइबर ब्लैक वन इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग माई प्राइमरी फाइबर सो नाउ हेयर वी हैव द स्ट्रेट लेंथ ऑफ द फाइबर बट एट द सेंटर वी आर गोइंग टू ट्विस्ट इट दिस इज माई सेकेंडरी फाइबर वी आर गोइंग टू ट्विस्ट द सेकेंडरी फाइबर सो वी आर गोइंग टू ट्विस्ट बोथ ऑफ दैम like we twist the two clothes in together we can twist the two fibers and this is how we have twisted the two fibers so now fiber pairs are twisted and now we are giving the heat treatment also so with the help of heat treatment they are going to fuse with each other so when they are fused with each other core of one fiber will be acting as a cladding of another fiber so here core and cladding are mixed and we know in the cladding also sufficient light will be traveling right so sufficient modes would be there in the cladding and this is how we will be having coupling to the secondary fiber so when the light travels to through the primary fiber because the primary and secondary core claddings are fused so now here the power will be coupled to the secondary fiber as well so i hope you understood this one as well now coming to the area splitting coupler in the area splitting coupler we are also calling it as star coupler here we have some area over which the coupling will be taking place we have only one primary over here let's suppose we have one primary this black one is the primary so one one dash is a primary in which the signal was moving so light is moving only in the one one dash so when it travels in this one one dash region so this area for this area we have twisted all of the fibers so now optical power is going to divide in all of these secondary signals so power we will be getting from this branch from this branch from this branch as well so we are going to get the secondary power or coupled power from all of the secondary fibers from 2 dash from 3 dash and from 4 dash as well so now portion of the fiber is fused again we are using the heat treatment again we are fusing some fibers for a given area and then only this type of coupling will be happening right area splitting will be used using the data in one fiber and the fiber will be using the input data only in the one fiber and this input data is coupled to all other secondary fibers now coming to the beam splitting coupler in the beam splitting coupler we are splitting the beam only right so we have two fibers so this is my primary fibers in the primary fiber we have the partially reflecting surface this green surface is called my partially reflecting surface when light is traveling from this fiber primary fiber it is because here we have the partially reflecting surface some of the light is going to reflect in the fiber 2 as well and this is how we are going to get the coupling in the fiber 2 as well so now partial coupling will be done in the fiber 2 with the beam splitting so beam is splitting over here due to the partially reflecting surface so here it is used for the multiplexing operation right whenever we want to have the multiplex signal it can be used for this multiplexing operation and we are using the partially reflecting surfaces so only some of the wavelengths are coupled so it is wavelength selective coupling right so beam splitting coupler is wavelength selective and this is how it is used in the multiplexing also so now coming to the some parameters how we can parameterize the coupling which coupler is best among all we have to see mathematically which one is best so let's suppose we have the input power which is represented as p not the power output from the primary is represented as p1 the power output from the secondary is represented as p2 and the reflected power is represented as p3 so p not is input power P1 is primary output power, P2 is secondary output power, and P3 is the reflected output power. So now coming to the splitting ratio. What is the splitting ratio? It is the percentage of power that is coupled, right? So how much power is coupled? P2 power is coupled. What was the total power? P1 plus P2. So what is the percentage of power coupled? So the splitting ratio will be equal to P2 upon P1 plus P2 into 100. So I hope you understood what is the splitting ratio how much splitting has been done for the initial input so input was p not splitting was done p1 and p2 were the outputs p2 was the coupled output so coupled output upon the total number of output that is p1 plus p2 so it will be giving me splitting ratio now coming to the axis loss 
so it is going to give me the amount of loss so input power upon total output power right so input power is p naught this is my input power right so upon total power so total output power would be p1 plus p2 so we are taking it as a loss factor so whenever i am finding out the loss i will be finding out the loss in db so i will be taking 10 log 10 of p0 upon p1 plus p2 so now excess loss is equal to 10 log 10 p0 upon p1 plus p2 now coming to the insertion loss what is the insertion loss so it is a path loss for a particular path right if i take ith input port and if i take jth output port right for any input and for any output i can find out the insertion loss right so the insertion loss can be found out easily for the star couplers so here let's suppose i have taken the ith input and jth output port so insertion loss again because it's a loss it can be calculated in 10 log 10 so it would be pi upon pj right then we have the return loss return loss is a reflected signal upon the input signal so how much signal is reflected back and how si what signal i have sent so it would be again because it is a loss 10 log 10 what is the reflected signal it is p3 input signal was p0 so in return loss will be equal to 10 log 10 p3 upon p0 how much of input signal is returning back so it will be calculated with the help of the reflected signal power so 10 log 10 p3 upon p0 now this return loss is also known as crosstalk right so i hope you understood all of the types of coupler what is a coupler what is its applications what are different types what are the different mechanism for the coupling and what are the different parameters if you still have any kind of doubt you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and also give me your feedback thank you so much